Hi, welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Vicki and I'm standing in my little hallway and I can't wait to show you my brand new landing zone. Come on in. Join us as we show you how we turn this underused closet into a landing zone and it's something you can do too. Hi, I'm Steph and I'm going to narrate this project for you. All right, so the first step was to demo the original closet. Needle nose pliers were essential to pry out all the old wall anchors. The hardware for the old wire shelving leave a lot of holes to be filled. It's an easy job with a little spackle from DAP. Mom hooked up the sander to our Makita wet dry vac and was able to sand without filling the space with sanding dust. Mom grabbed this old container of water putty to fill in the spots where the door hinges used to be. To use, you just add a little bit of water at a time and mix until the consistency of spackle. Then she used a Rockler silicone glue tool to fill in the hinge spaces. While all that was drying, we started on the bench framework. The measurements are based on the width and depth of the closet. In the design, the side pieces will be screwed into the front and back pieces. Here mom's adding pocket holes to the end of each side piece. The bench and the front apron of the seat are upcycled from an old table. The apron is glued to the front 2x4 support prior to installing it in the closet. Wood glue and a few brad nails holds it in place. Now onto the installation of the frame. The back piece was screwed into studs on the back wall of the closet. Next the side pieces were screwed into the back and into a wall stud. We repeated the same process on each side. And then it was time for the front piece. It fits. <laughs> it's screwed in securely to the adjacent side supports. We added an extra support to the center. Off camera, mom painted the side walls and ceiling white. Here she's using a laser level to double check the measurements needed for the backboard. The back wall will feature a whiteboard cut to mimic shiplap. We didn't want to screw it directly into the wall, so we cut a piece of underlayment in order to attach a shiplap to it. This was not easy to cut on the table saw, but between the two of us we got it done. To make it a bit easier, we cut down the whiteboard with a circular saw and then cut our shiplap to size on the table saw. Using 120 grit sandpaper, mom slightly distressed the edges of the whiteboard shiplap. This is to complement the barn door we made in mom's laundry room a few years ago. We wanted to add hooks, but decided to add the hooks on a separate board and then screw that board into the closet. Bayer paint in real teal will add a pop of color. Time to add the shiplap straps to the backer board with wood glue. The hook board will go between the two halves of the shiplap. Here we're using the board as a spacer to finish the bottom half. Lots of weights keep this nice and flat. Once dry, it was time to install the shiplap. The boards are screwed into place. The hook board will hide the screws in the middle. The screws at the bottom will be hidden by the bench once it's in place. To freshen up the old tile, Mom is using Bayer concrete floor paint. We had this left over from a project in my garage. Mom prepped the floor with liquid sander, let that dry, and then painted a couple coats of floor paint. The bench is an old tabletop that mom had previously used in her craft room. Here she's starting to remove the old finish. She had heard about using plastic wrap to prevent the stripper from drying out, but I never tried it, but it worked. Here's the best, seeing that finish come off in sheets. For some of the tougher spots, she used a bit of acetone to liquefy the paint. Once the tabletop was cleaned up, we cut it to size, and then it was stained with Varathane gel stain in weathered gray. We bought fancy hardware hooks that proved to be a little bit finicky to install, but with a little math, we got it done. Because we didn't have the right length screws, Mom had to cut off the ends with our Dremel rotary tool with a metal cutting blade. 
We used a sheet of half inch plywood to make a rollout drawer for under the bench. We made all the cuts with our Makita track saw. This plywood was a mess, so to help it look better, Mom is applying DAP wood grain filler. You mix it with water and brush it on or use a putty knife to add it to all the wood defects. The front edge of the storage box is going to have the same curve as the bench apron. Mom used the remaining apron as a template to mark the curve and then she cut it out with a jigsaw. Once the wood fill was dry and sanded, Mom primed all the drawer pieces and then painted. In hindsight, she should have just waited to paint the box once it was assembled. Glue and brad nails were used to assemble the box. The drawer is going to move using appliance casters. Here we're figuring out how high we need to attach the drawer bottom so that there's enough room for the appliance casters to work but not be seen. We added the bottom drawer and I brad nailed it into place. I marked the placement for the holes for the handle and used this Craig jig to make the holes. The hook board was secured into place, the holes were spackled and then touched up. Now it wouldn't be a closet redo without a little wall control for added storage and flexibility. Wall control is our favorite metal pegboard organization system and we have it in lots of rooms in our houses. I lined up the panel with the top edge of the hooks, marked the holes, drilled the holes for the anchors, added the anchors, and then installed the panels. It took four tries to get a light fixture we liked, but we finally got one and this is it. Here I'm installing the light fixture after turning off the power. The electrical connections were made easy with the WAGO connectors. The gloves are included with the light fixture to keep from getting fingerprints on the matte finish as it's installed. I added an Edison bulb but later swapped it out with a Y Smart bulb so we can have this closet light automatically go on and off whenever we enter the hallway. The appliance casters were hot glued to the bottom of the drawer. Lastly, the bench top was added and L brackets were used to secure it to the frame. And here it is, all done. This is the perfect place for mom to store all her daily supplies and a great place to take shoes off and put them back on. What we learned. So mom, what is a landing zone? Well, for me, I come in through the garage right over here and I always have an armload of stuff. So I needed a place where I could just stop, leave all that stuff, my purse, my glasses, a coffee cup, my phone, and a place to put my shoes because I don't wear my shoes in the house. And I can put my shoes away, grab my slippers, and head into the house. So it's a place to leave all that stuff. So you might notice that this door right here actually looks pretty similar to the landing zone. We actually built the door to cover mom's laundry room a few years ago and that was the inspiration for the landing zone. We just think they look great together. And one thing that we learned was when we put the shiplap onto the door, we actually used construction adhesive and you could kind of see the pattern uh, where it like laid underneath, which always kind of annoyed us. So when we did the shiplap over here, we used wood glue. So it was nice and smooth and consistent and you don't see any kind of raised marks. Mm -hmm. So we have been learning. Yes. <laughs> You probably noticed that we cut the backer into two pieces, and that was because we tried to put that full piece in there and it would not fit into the closet. So we cut it, which ended up being a really good thing because we used that, the board that has hooks on it. We were able to hide all the screws that actually hold the backer board. So it was a twofer. We got two things out of it. <laughs> Now one of the inspirations for this closet was the light fixture that we originally saw at Home Depot and we got it and we're like, okay, this is perfect. We're gonna do a black and white theme like with the door. We're gonna make it look similar. So that was kind of the inspiration. So we got started with the project and then I happened to look at the box and it said bronze. And I was like, 
that is not black. That is not going to work for it with our theme. So we ultimately had to buy, I think, like four different lights, and this was the fourth one. Uh, so we finally got one that we were not, we still don't love it as much as the first one, but it's black and that went with our theme. So we're happy with it. Uh, so my little advice is check the box. Even if it looks mm -hmm. black in the store, check the box because mm -hmm. they're going to sneak in those bronze and you're going to get a home and not be happy. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and keep your receipts or just use a credit card because it was super easy to take those back to Home Depot. Yep. We got to use our trailer on this project. We were able to get the four by eight sheets on that trailer and bring them home, so it was super easy. And if you wanna see how Steph actually built that trailer, we'll put a playlist below. So thanks for joining us. If you wanna see more projects from us, be sure to visit us at motherdaughterprojects.com. And you can find a written tutorial of this project with all the links to the products that we use on our website. So if you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up. And if you super like it, you can click a button below to leave a financial donation. Uh, so thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Hold on. Okay, well, check yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should put words on it. Check, check yourself. yourself. <laughs> Gotta, you know. <laughs> okay.